Jewish people were the initial target audience of the evangelism of Jesus and his disciples. However, they largely rejected Jesus as the Messiah. Jesus only gained a sizable following after he ascended to heaven, when the Apostle Paul started evangelizing to Gentiles, i.e. non-Jews. Paul preached a modified version of the message of Jesus that was stripped of its Jewish elements, such as circumcision and keeping the Sabbath. This watered-down version appealed to Gentiles who started to embrace Paul's teachings in large numbers, culminating in the pagan Roman Empire adopting Christianity as its official state religion several centuries after Jesus. So, we need to understand the mindset of the Gentiles who first received Paul's message in order to understand how paganism crept into Christianity. When Jewish people heard stories about Jesus performing amazing miracles, they would have understood him in the same context as the likes of Moses and the other Israelite prophets who were all granted signs and wonders by God. However, such stories about Jesus would have been interpreted very differently by pagan Gentiles. This is illustrated in the New Testament book of Acts, which informs us, In Lystra there sat a man who was lame. He had been that way from birth and had never walked. Paul looked directly at him, saw that he had faith to be healed and called out, Stand up on your feet. At that the man jumped up and began to walk. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they shouted in the Lyconian language, The gods have come down to us in human form. We can see that the pagan Gentile peoples to whom Paul was preaching were in the habit of idolizing human beings. With this in mind, it's easy to appreciate why Gentiles from a pagan background would idolize Jesus. Upon hearing stories about the miracles of Jesus, they would naturally interpret him in the same light as the Greco-Roman gods they were used to. The early church emerged in both a Jewish and Gentile world, and so Christians had to reconcile the pure monotheism they had inherited from Judaism with the polytheism they had derived from paganism. Gregory of Nyssa is a 4th century bishop who is venerated as a saint in the Roman Catholic and Eastern Orthodox churches. He wrote, For the truth passes in the mean between these two conceptions, destroying each heresy, and yet accepting what is useful to it from each. The Jewish dogma is destroyed by the acceptance of the word and by belief in the spirit, while the polytheistic error of the Greek school is made to vanish by the unity of the nature abrogating this imagination of plurality. Here, Gregory of Nyssa acknowledged that the Christian conception of God is neither purely the polytheism of the Greeks nor purely the monotheism of the Jews, but rather a mixture of both. The Quran declares that those Christians who deify Jesus are imitating pagans of old. Here the Quran demonstrates remarkable insight by pointing out that Christian beliefs about Jesus originate from past pagan religions. The message of Islam, like Christianity, was also delivered to a pagan audience. But unlike Christianity, Islam's monotheism was untainted and remains pure to this day. Even rabbis acknowledge this fact because they permit Jewish people to pray in Muslim places of worship in the situation where no synagogue is available. Rabbi Maimonides, a leading authority in Jewish law, wrote the following with regards to the Islamic concept of God. These Ishmaelites are not idol worshippers in the least, and paganism has long since cut off from their mouths and their hearts, and they worship the singular God properly and without any blemish. By comparison, Jewish people are forbidden from even setting foot inside churches. Rabbi Maimonides had this to say about Christianity. Know that this Christian nation, with all their many different sects, are all idol worshippers and all their holidays are forbidden, and we deal with them regarding religious issues as we would pagans. <laughs>